Hello. I would like to tell you of an encounter I had many years ago in my native country of Norway. It was with what I had always thought as a werewolf or wolfman, but my wife, who is an American, had informed me that what I saw was something actually called a dogman. When this happened to me, I was barely 20 years old. I had not met my wife yet, nor for another two years would I know her. This is when I was foolish enough to go out into the woods alone. Trust me, I do not recommend that anyone ever do that. Not after you hear what I saw out there. I live in the western part of Norway, and used to take pleasure going into the woods to hike, take pictures, and go on solo camping trips. Again, this is when I was foolish enough to do this all by myself. After what happened to me, it was a very long time before I stepped foot back into the forest. It wasn't until I moved to the United States to be close to my wife's elderly parents that I ever even went camping again. The first few times I went back into the woods, I did not sleep peacefully. Every little noise woke me up and startled me. I was worried for my children, who were camping in the trailer with us. But back to what happened to me. It was during a solo trip. The first day and night, it was very peaceful and natural. Nothing out of the ordinary happened to me. I had hiked into a spot, which took almost two hours and was a very steep journey. The first day I was there, I had spent relaxing from my journey to the spot that I liked. Take a note that I had been to this specific area quite a few times before this, and nothing out of the ordinary ever happened either. This was during your typical Norwegian summer, when the sun does not go down for very long. Our days typically last up to 19 hours. This was the perfect time to camp, in my opinion, because you had a lot of daylight to use to explore. After I rested, I settled into my camping spot. I took off to hike around the area and find spots that I knew and loved. There was a very large rock that I liked to climb and read my book on top of. I found it and started reading until I felt hungry. Then I went back to my camp to eat. Just like I said, everything about this first day was normal. When I awoke the next morning, it was almost as if the atmosphere around me had completely changed. The forest seemed less alive. There was not many creatures talking to each other that day. It also felt different, like when you're on a slide at the park before you shock yourself, like the air was statically charged. It was very unusual, and made me feel very uneasy, but I did not want to leave. I enjoyed this place, it was among my favorite places to be. So I shook off that dreadful feeling, and went about my day. I made breakfast for myself and then went to explore and read my book again. At lunchtime I was cooking my food, but I could have sworn I heard something scream or roar. It was so loud that I could hear it over my headphones that I was using. During this encounter with a scream, it sounded like this beastly yell. I have never heard anything like that, but I have heard recordings of the American Sasquatch yelling into the night, and it sounded similar, but not quite the same. Where the Sasquatch recordings were deep and sounded almost like a primate, these screams were higher pitched and sounded more like a coyote call. Except we don't have coyotes in Norway. We have wolves, but this did not sound like a wolf. It sounded like a scream or a yell. I could have mistaken what it sounded like because of my music playing, but I am certain of what I heard because I heard it again later that day. This was more than enough to keep me close to my campsite for the rest of the day. I did not know what in the world it could be, and I did not want to risk finding out in the middle of nowhere. I sat by my fire to read my book and still enjoy the time. I didn't hear the scream again for a long time, and even started thinking to myself that I had either imagined it or mistook it for something else. I eventually pushed it out of my mind and took a small walk around the area. I needed more firewood among other things, and I was not afraid at this point. While I was out there though, it seemed to be even more silent than it was earlier. Nothing was making any noise at all, except for the sound of something moving behind me. I admit, at this point, I was getting scared. Whatever was moving around sounded very large. I spun around because I was afraid of it coming towards me, but I couldn't see anything at all. Whatever was moving around was very good at keeping itself hidden. I was wondering what could be so large and so hidden at once. I heard a deep growling noise and decided it was time to go back to the safety of my camp. I carried what wood I had collected and headed back. Like I said, there are occasional wolves here, but I have never seen one myself. 
I have only seen deer, fox, and birds in this area. Either way, I did not want to be attacked by a wolf or even a bear. I needed to get back. While I was walking, it felt very much like something was following me and watching me. It's that feeling you get when you know someone is there that you can't see, but they can see you. I was very eager to get back to my camp at this point, and I spent some time after that just being aware of my surroundings. I was listening to the noises of the forest, trying to hear either those heavy footsteps or the growling again. I didn't hear anything, and eventually the forest became noisy again. I was calling myself foolish again, because I let my imagination get the better of me. What else could possibly be out here with me? Maybe it was another camper that was just having a little bit of fun with me. As the day started to turn to night, it looked like a clear, beautiful Norwegian evening. It really is something there. I miss being there a lot now that I'm in the States. Remember, this was a Norwegian summer night, so it was still very light outside. I made more food. I like to eat, if you can't tell. I was reading my book, and time must have gotten away from me, because before I knew it, it was getting a little dark. It was still light enough to see outside, but that meant it was getting very late. I wanted to get some rest, because I planned on going for a long hike the next day, before packing up and hiking back out to my car. I gave myself time to finish the chapter and have a snack before I would put out my fire and crawl into my tent, but the thing in the forest had other plans. I couldn't even finish my chapter before it made itself known again. All I know is that I started feeling that static feeling again, and I was hearing a buzz in my head. Then the forest went silent again, like they knew that something was coming for me and that they didn't want to let it know that they were there because they were afraid it would get them too. My breath caught in my throat. Something inside of me was telling me to run and get away from there, but my legs suddenly felt like cement. I was afraid that if I stood up, I would just fall right over. Please understand that these feelings of dread hit me before I even saw this wolf man. That terror is on another level that I have never felt before. All I could do at this point was hold my breath and listen for anything that was headed my way. I kicked myself for not listening during the day. I should have left then. I was also damning myself for not bringing a rifle. I had a very small handgun, but nothing that could stop more than a man. My instincts were telling me that this thing was dangerous and violent and that I needed to get out of there. I forced myself to my feet and packed a backpack with what I thought I needed to take with me. I kept my handgun on my hip, put out my fire, and decided it was time to head to my car. I would still be able to see, and I did not want to take the chance of this thing coming up to me with just my tent to protect me. I remember thinking there was a chance that I would feel very foolish in the morning, but at this point I was in a panic and just needed to get out of there. I decided it was better to be safe than sorry. As I was walking through the forest, I heard that scream again. It was coming from behind me, but it sounded too close for comfort. My blood ran cold. Nothing out here makes a sound like that and it was not a camper pulling a joke. It was unnatural and unearthly. It scared me out of my wits. I picked up my pace, starting to actually panic now. It was a very steep journey, and I continued to slip downhill as I tried to move quickly in low light. I knew I was cut up, and both of my elbows were burning from a nasty fall, but I wanted to get out of there while I could. I tried to keep moving quickly. My adrenaline was helping, but it was very late at this point, and I was becoming fatigued. I kept hearing this monster screaming on and off. When it did, it was like the noises it made cut through the dusky sky, and the whole forest felt the fear that I was feeling. It sounded like it was keeping pace with me. It never sounded any further away, but it eventually sounded closer. I was starting to slow down now too. My legs were throbbing. I was sure the last time I fell I broke a finger. The pain was incredible. It must have been over an hour since I started my journey back when I saw this thing for myself. I started hearing growling. That's what made me realize how close this thing was. When I turned around, it was behind me, and I almost fell over. I never could have guessed what it was that was following me. My brain couldn't even understand what I was looking at while I was staring at it. It took every ounce of willpower not to turn and run. For all I knew, this thing would chase me down just like a wolf chases a deer. It was still light enough in the late night that I could take in many of the details. It was standing on just two legs, not like a dog does when it's trying to do a trick, but rather standing just like a man would. It was breathing heavy, 
like it had ran a great distance, probably to track me down and eat me, I was thinking to myself. It was extremely tall, probably well over seven feet. Understandably, I did not walk over to measure this thing in meters. It was also very wide in the chest and had very thick, powerful looking back legs. One of its arms was slung on a tree, like it was just casually watching me, saying hello, while the other was hanging down towards the ground. They were very long arms, and also powerful looking, but not as thick as the back legs were. This creature was covered in thick fur from head to toe. It was gray and brown in color. It seriously looked like someone had taken the head off of an extremely large wolf and placed it on the body of this monster. The head was entirely wolf, except it looked very, very aggressive. It was staring at me, not taking its gaze off me, and then it dropped down on all fours very slowly, but still in a very fluid motion. Now that you mention it, I did hear something of a popping noise, but never linked the two together. When it got on all fours, this thing looked just as natural as when it was on two legs, and then it started walking towards me. It was crouching low, like it was stalking me, like a cat does, but even on all fours it was still very tall. It was making a low growling noise as it started getting closer. I started backing away. I wanted to run so badly but I was too afraid. I had completely forgotten about my gun on me until this point, and I slowly, and very shakily, I need to add, lifted it up and fired towards this thing. I'm sure I missed it, but the pop was loud enough to startle it. At least I think so, because it leapt backwards and took off in the other direction. I took that opportunity to run for it and summoned everything I could just to keep running. I could still hear it, behind me somewhere, making a barking or yapping noise. It would let out those screams too. It sounded wild and feral and very angry. It was like something out of the scariest scary movie that you can think of. I was running through the forest, through the dusk light, trying to get away from something that looked just like a movie monster werewolf. At different points in time, I could hear it crashing behind me, off to the side of me, but I didn't dare look away. I just concentrated on the terrain in front of me. When I got close enough to my car, I set off the alarm. I thought that maybe something like that would scare it away. I don't know if it worked or if it let me go because I was leaving the forest. But all of a sudden, I couldn't hear it making noises anymore. I know that if it wanted to catch me and tackle me, it would have. It could have pounced on me while we were standing so close to each other. I just don't know why it didn't. Maybe it just wanted me out of the forest, or maybe it was having fun. I don't know. I got to my car, and of course I was so shaky I couldn't get the door unlocked. Thank God for automatic locks now. I make sure all my cars have them, especially since this encounter. I finally got in my car and sped away from that hell as fast as I could. I did not sleep for days. I would doze off because I was exhausted, but then I would have a nightmare about that thing and wake right back up. Both of my brothers that I told believed my story and said it was a werewolf. I believed that for many years. I wouldn't talk about it to anyone, just my two brothers, since I knew that I could trust them. I would not set foot back in that forest and begged everyone I knew not to go in there either. It was about two years after my encounter that I met an American woman named Charlotte, whom I fell deeply in love with. We were married and spent several years in Norway together. I was lucky enough for her to give me four children, all of whom are very healthy. I could not be any more in love with my family than I am right now. I told her what had happened to me that night. I asked her to be my wife and apologized for keeping it a secret for so long. I explained to her that I didn't like talking about it because it would cause me great fear all over again. Because she's such an amazing woman, she believed me and only had questions and support for me. We moved to the United States four years ago to be with Charlotte's parents, who are both in bad health. It was here that I first started camping again, but while I was out there, the memories came back to me. And that's when I decided it was time to find out what it was that I saw that night. With Charlotte's help, we began to read about werewolves and dogmen, and we realized it was one of these creatures that I encountered. I do not remember seeing a tail. It may or may not have had one, but I couldn't distinguish the color of the eyes either. 
I'm writing to you in hopes that you or someone you know can shed light on which creature this was. It's my understanding that they are two separate entities, and I would like to know what I saw. And so I will leave you with this, my new friend. When someone tells you there are no monsters out there, do not believe them. I saw one with my own two eyes, and I could swear to you that these things are very real. Thank you again, Anders. Hello, my friend. I hope this finds you well. I will now undertake to write a short summary of my encounter for your presentation. I do request that my name or address not be used. You know it, but I would like you to keep it a secret. I would like it posted simply as Anonymous in Wisconsin. My story can be assisted by a little bit about myself first, so you understand where I'm coming from in my explanation of my encounter with the unexplained. I'm a third generation Wisconsinite and was born and raised in rural Wisconsin. I grew up amid woods, lakes, and fields. I don't scare easily, and I'm accustomed to the night and to wildlife. I currently live in the same place near where I saw the dog man and have lived here for many years. Wildlife, which I encounter on a regular basis, includes small critters like raccoons and foxes, turkeys, pheasants, sandhill cranes, owls, and eagles. I have likewise encountered larger animals, such as deer, coyote, black bear, and even a cougar along the roads where I live. To city dwellers, this may sound exotic, but for us in these parts, it's not surprising. Just another day of life. I know the difference between a bear and what I saw. I know the difference between a big dog and what I saw. I know the difference between a wolf or a coyote and what I saw. What I saw was not only surprisingly unusual, but was not explainable in terms of commonly accepted terms. I've not always lived here. I moved away as a young man to pursue higher studies and obtain university degrees and certifications. I lived abroad and learned several languages and used to teach. I returned back to Wisconsin after many years and attended to family duties, but still carry with me my knowledge and experience in exercising critical thinking. I'm a Roman Catholic and very spiritual, but not given to superstition, and I'm certainly not a credulous person. I consider myself open-minded on the mysteries of what lies beyond human imagination. I've never seen a flying saucer, nor have I seen a ghost. I don't criticize those who have claimed to see such things, but I myself have not been able to witness such paranormal occurrences. Although to be fully transparent, I can say that I have had unusual experiences before and since the Dogman encounter. But why I happened to see the Dogman doing what he was doing is as much as a mystery to me as it is to you, the listener of my narration. I just don't know. All I know is what I saw and what happened afterwards. What did I see, you ask? Well, I was driving along the same road which leads to my rural home near central Wisconsin. I noticed something big and black in a ditch on the opposite side of the road. It was at this point of the road where I had previously noticed the carcass of a full-grown deer which evidently had been hit by a vehicle and landed in a ditch. It was in the autumn of the year and I was both working and attending a technical college part-time. This was in order to obtain certification in a field of manufacturing in which I was employed. The corn was still high in the fields and not yet harvested. It was still light and I was not thinking of anything in particular, but the movements of the black thing in the ditch by the deer carcass did attract my attention. While I was approaching that point in the road, which I would pass on my way to the city, I had the feeling that I should slow down and witness what I saw. I thought at first it was a black garbage bag or tarp which someone had discarded. However, as I got closer while driving my vehicle, I could see it had been more clearly defined than just a bag. It had a clear shape, and I slowed a bit to make out what this dark shape was. At this point I was thinking, perhaps a bear? No, it didn't have a bear shape. It was thinner and taller. The closer I got, the more clearly I could discern its shape. It was definitely big. How big is impossible to guess, but it was big enough to make the deer carcass look relatively small in comparison. It was dark, maybe not totally black as I had first supposed, but quite nearly so. It had two large claw-like appendages, somewhat like hands with which it was grasping the body of the dead deer 
which it appeared to be eating with its long canine muzzle, or snout. It had large, upright points on its head, which I supposed to be the ears, much like that of a German Shepherd, only fuzzier. The whole thing seemed covered in dark fur or hair. As I was passing by it, it looked up from its meal of the deer carcass, and it seemed to observe my passing vehicle with only modest curiosity. Its eyes and snout glistened, and it turned back its head to continue eating. Needless to say, I was taken aback, but had no intentions of stopping or turning around for a better look. I told myself that whatever the hell that thing was, I would let it attend to its business, and I would attend to mine, which had nothing to do with dogmen. Live and let live is my motto, and I planned on living and not investigating this creature. I didn't see the whole creature, mind you. I only saw the upper half, as it was in a deep ditch, and also had the entire deer in front of it. I had the impression, in fact, that it may have been kneeling or crouching down as it was in the process of eating that deer carcass when I saw it. I saw no tail, and I didn't turn around to look. Was I scared? Not really. Was I curious? Of course. But I reminded myself of how curiosity killed the cat. As I drove to my destination, I tried to process my experience and to try to make sense of what I had seen. Was it real? Was I imagining things? Was it all in my head? Or was this creature objectively real and outside my own subjective perception? I was not drinking, nor taking drugs. I was not sleeping or hallucinating. I had not told anyone yet, and I debated within myself if I ever would. What would I say? Who would I tell? Certainly no one at work or at school. I would be met with skepticism and scorn. I did not consider this being a threat. It was simply eating roadkill like any scavenger would. Nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Like I said, live and let live. I decided not to bring it up to anyone at work or school. I was a grown man in my 40s, and I didn't need the subjective ridicule. Upon my return home, I'd be passing the same part of the road where I saw the dogman eating the deer carcass. By that time, it was already dark. As I approached that part of the road, I put my headlights on high beam and kept my eyes peeled for anything unusual. I figured that whatever it was, it had to have left by now, so I felt I could slow down and look for any traces of its visit. At first, I was relieved that I saw no dogman. Good, I thought. Maybe it was my imagination after all. However, while I saw no dogman, it dawned on me to my dismay that neither was there any deer carcass, or indeed any remains of a deer at all. I was horrified as I grasped the fact that whatever this dogman was, he had disposed of an entire deer. We're talking legs, body, head, and all. What the hell kind of animal is capable of that, I thought to myself. Worse yet, what else is it capable of? This was an important question, as this was only about one mile from the driveway of my own home. Whatever this creature is, it is physically real. No apparition, no wispy creature of the night. It is real. It's big and it has an appetite that's capable of eating an entire full-grown deer, or at least strong enough to carry it off. I would have rather seen a ghost. The next day I went back there. No deer. I was not mistaken. I decided to tell my father. He was elderly and in failing health and was living with me at the time, so I could take care of him. He was not only my dad, but my best friend. I confided in him what I had experienced. At first, he thought I was joking, or must have been mistaken. I dropped it. How could I blame him for not believing me right away? It was an incredible account, and I was still having trouble believing it myself. We were in the habit of going for a daily walk, so we got out our walking sticks and headed down the long, winding driveway, which leads to our garage. This is the road that we lived on, the very same road on which I had seen the dog man. When we got to the road, I noticed something laying in front of my mailbox. I picked it up. I stood there in shocked disbelief at what I held in my hand. It was the strip of deer hide. What would a strip of deer hide with its hair still on it be doing lying in front of my mailbox? There was no roadkill around that I could see. The conclusion which dawned upon me was chilling. The dogman knew where I lived, and it left its calling card in the form of a tattered deer hide. I knew it was from the carcass that I saw it eating the previous day. 
Something in me just knew it. I showed my father. He'd been a deer hunter and recognized immediately what I handed him to examine. I explained to him what I thought it meant. We looked at each other in the eyes and he believed me. We continued our walk in silence, but on the way back he gave me the wise advice of an old man. Son, it's better that you not tell people about this for now. And I agreed. Eventually, in strict confidence, I did inform only three other people. I emailed a friend on the East Coast who was interested in such things. He believed me. I also told a friend whom I'd rented my home from, and also a friend who was a retired priest. These were all people who knew me, and whom I could trust. I asked them not to talk about it with others. Otherwise, in all these years, I have told no one until now when I'm sharing it with you, and giving you permission to tell the world. You see, I did not want to be either ridiculed nor called a liar. I did not want either my personal or professional reputation to be subject to criticism, just for sharing what I had witnessed. It just wasn't worth it to me. I know what I saw, and I had no business trying to convince other people that I saw the same thing. I did not want to pursue it any further. I was once told by a priest that when you gaze into the unknown, then the unknown can gaze back, and I wanted no part of it. No gazing for me. Now I must admit, I had heard about a creature like this. I had read about the so-called Beast of Bray Road. Could this be the same kind of creature? I would never have gone out looking for such things, but apparently I didn't need to. A couple of days later, I was walking by the beach near our dock. We live along a reservoir, mind you. And I noticed tracks in the sand. Big paw prints. Too big to be anything that lived around here. A week later, as I pulled up to the end of my driveway from a drive to the city, I noticed something blocking my entrance to the road. It was a dead fawn. It was lying right in the middle of my driveway. What had killed it? And why was it in my driveway? I didn't know, but I dragged it into the weeds in the ditch. I had to get to my classes. I just did my best to ignore these things and chalk them up to being mysteries for which I had no answer, and therefore, it didn't matter. Since that time, almost a decade ago, my father has passed, Rekris Gatampachi, and I've had no further encounters with the dogman. I'm in a different profession and I feel more secure financially and professionally. However, I am still careful not to subject myself to skepticism and ridicule which is why I don't want either my name nor location disclosed publicly. Hopefully, the dogman is no longer roaming these parts and won't resent me for sharing this story. If I were no longer living in this residence, I would have little hesitation in disclosing my location. However, I am doubtful that it would be appreciated by local residents. As it is, my main hesitation about disclosing this information would be if this dogman is some sort of supernatural creature with whom bad misfortune would be associated. Native people with whom I have spoken about these things have respect for the spiritual realm, which we rationalistic modern white men lack. And I certainly don't mean any disrespect towards these entities by disclosing this experience to you and your listeners. I believe there's more to reality than what meets the eye, and as long as we respect each other, then there's nothing to fear. Idle curiosity and monster hunting are not what I would consider to be respectful, so I don't endorse that or share my experience with that motive. I hope that your channel continues to promote knowledge of the other side, in the same way nature channels promote knowledge of nature, in the interest of enrichment of our minds and souls. We are truly part of a wonderful and mysterious universe, and I thank you for taking the time to share this experience for me. Anonymous in Wisconsin Hello, my name is Dustin. For privacy purposes, I'm gonna forego giving you my last name. I've seen a lot of weird shit in my time, but what I'm about to share with you really takes the cake. I witnessed this thing twice, and both times, it was just out of this world. I live in Pennsylvania, on Lake Erie, and I'm a security guard by trade. These encounters happened a few years ago, when I was still at my first job. Since then, I've left that company and work a different route and a different shift, which thankfully is now during the day. I grew up on ghost stories from my grandma. I could sit for hours listening to all the stories that she would tell me from her time in New York. 
this was when she was growing up. That place has a lot of history. Old places like that always do. And because of that, I believe a lot of unnatural things have been around there. Like ghosts, for example. I had a run-in with a couple of those entities. I believe they were ghosts. Nothing major. Not like what I'm about to tell you with the Dogman. The first encounter with the paranormal that I ever had was in this old rundown house that a couple of friends of mine went in with me when we were teenagers. I remember calling out to whatever could be in there to show us a sign that it was there with us. There were a lot of stories about that place being haunted, and I guess I was just curious enough to want to know. All of a sudden, something grabbed my wrist. It felt like a human hand closing around it, and that was enough to send the three of us tearing out of the house like a group of dumb teenagers that we were. I know exactly what it was that I felt. It was the spirit answering my question to whether or not it was there with us. The other time I saw what I also believe was a spiritual activity was when I was at my girlfriend's house, which she also claimed was haunted. I learned my lesson from the first time and I didn't call out to it. In fact, I didn't want anything to do with it since that was going to be the first time that I'd be staying over at her house the entire night. But anyways, I was sitting in the living room with her, watching a movie, and this vase flew off the mantle and shattered onto the ground. It scared the crap out of me because I actually saw it happen. It didn't just fall over, it didn't just tip over. There wasn't any gust of wind that blew it off of the mantle. It actually looked like someone swiped it right off of the mantle. It had force to it, and it actually landed pretty far away from where it was sitting. My girlfriend looked at me, almost like she wasn't scared, and said, Told you, he's pissed that you're here. All I could do was nod, still in shock of what I saw. I didn't have the faintest clue what to say. I ended up still staying there that night and nothing else happened, but I didn't get a very good night's sleep. And after that, nothing happened again as far as her ghost went. She moved in with me about seven months after that. We're married now and expecting our first child in August. Luckily, nothing hitchhiked during her move, and we hadn't had any spiritual activity either. We did tell the next people that rented that house about the ghost. They seemed a little put off that we told them, even annoyed, but I felt like it was my responsibility to tell them that there was something in the house throwing vases off of mantles. I still think it was the right thing to do. The last thing I want to say before I get into these encounters with what I believe to be a Dogman Variant 2 is that I have a very open mind when it comes to these things. I thank my grandma and my own encounters for that. But with that being said, I don't think that everything we encounter is paranormal, and I try to debunk everything I witness and hear before I go around saying it was paranormal. But what I experienced, I have no rational explanation for. It wasn't a bear or a wolf. It looked like an overgrown hyena. It didn't look like anything I've ever seen before, not even in my wildest nightmares. If you or anyone listening has a better explanation about what I witnessed, then I'm all ears. During both of my encounters, I was working the graveyard shift, and they were both in the middle of the night when the surroundings were pitch black. I believe the encounters were both the same animal since they were within three miles of each other, and the markings were the same on both of these animals that I witnessed. I was scared both times I encountered this hyena creature, but not terrified. It showed no outward signs of aggression towards me, maybe annoyance the second time, but I never truly felt fear for my life. The first encounter happened late one night in September when I was on shift. It was my job to make sure there were no idiots breaking into the little stores around one of the beaches on the lake, so I'd spend a little time at each area, then drive to another. There were four areas in all that I was responsible for. Every once in a while, I'd find someone walking around drunk or teenagers thinking they were cool and trying to vandalize. I'd make sure they were still there when the cops arrived to arrest them. The night of my first encounter was boring. Nothing going on until I saw that animal. I was driving down the road and I saw this shape at first, like a big dog or something. It was on the side of the road, so I slowed because I didn't want to hit it in case it ran out in front of me. I was probably going 50 or so at first, but slowed down to about 40. And then I realized it wasn't a dog. I didn't know what it was. It stood on the side of the road for a minute and then darted across it. It was wicked fast, and just as tall as my patrol car on all four legs. It was on all fours. The way it ran was this loping sprint, like 
it would launch itself with its front legs and then push off with its back legs. The back legs were like a dog's, how it runs on its toes and the heel sticks backwards. It had big shoulders and even bigger biceps, big clawed hands for front paws, and normal looking paws on the back. It looked like it was actually holding something in one of the front paws, like a rabbit or something, which was bloody. Because it was holding something, it looked to me like it was using the knuckles of that hand to run. It was this brownish red color, but seemed to have dark brown spots on its sides. It had a large head with long ears that were rounded on top, and a big thick muzzle, which was also rounded. When it ran across the road, it looked at me, and the headlights made the eyes glow this orange color. I'll never forget that. It looked like they were glowing from the inside. It looked like it was panting when it ran. It had a big tongue, long and blue, and it was hanging out the side of its mouth. It had razor sharp teeth that looked like it could tear you in half. And the face was lighter in color, almost like a tan, but the muzzle was dark brown. It sprinted across the road in a couple of bounds and darted off into the night towards the lake. I was completely caught off guard at the sight of this thing. Obviously, and I had a few choice words that I yelled out even though I was the only one there. I wasn't about to get out and investigate this thing either. Not alone in the middle of the night, thank you. I had no idea what it was. I tried going through a mental list of things it could be, but I kept coming up blank. It wasn't a dog. It wasn't a wolf. It wasn't a coyote. It was too big for any of those. I know wolves can get pretty massive, but this thing would dwarf the biggest wolf you've ever seen. We have bears around here, but it sure as hell wasn't a bear either. I was at a loss for an explanation. I kept driving, looking back in my mirror until I made it to the next location that I patrolled. And then I radioed in what I saw. I said there was some weird animal running across the road. They asked what I thought it was and I told them honestly I had no idea. They said they'd have animal control check it out since they didn't investigate animal problems either. I left it at that for the rest of the night, but when I went back home, I told my girlfriend all about it, and she had a couple ideas as to what it could be. You see, she's into the paranormal like I am. I guess you'd have to be to live in a haunted house and enjoy it, right? But her knowledge far surpasses mine, and she gave me a list of things that she thought it was, like a skinwalker or a shapeshifter, but on the list was something called the dog man. I looked it up since I had no idea what it was, and I read about the Michigan Dogman. It didn't sound like anything that I had witnessed, so I brushed off the idea of Dogman too. I talked to her about it, and she told me that there was more than one type of Dogman, so I researched more. Then I came to a website that had some really bad photoshopped images of what they think these different types could be, and I was actually surprised by this recreation of something called the Dogman Variant 2 which looks a lot like a hyena, and that's exactly what I saw. I showed her a picture of the variant too, and told her it was the thing that ran out in front of me, and she actually wanted to go out and drive around where I saw that hyena thing, but I told her she was crazy. We went out that night for a drive to where I saw it. She usually gets her way. We didn't see anything though. It was about a month after that that I had another encounter with that thing. And this one was a lot more personal than the first, since it didn't run away this time. Once again, I was driving on my route, having all but pushed that night out of my head. I guess that's a defense mechanism or something. It was about two and a half miles up the road from where I saw it the first time, when I saw it again. When my lights hit it, it was hunched over in the middle of the road this time, and I knew immediately what I was dealing with. It was so big, though, that I couldn't go around it. It was only a little two-lane road, and this creature was blocking my path. It looked up at me from whatever it was eating. There wasn't enough left of whatever it was to clearly identify it at the moment. There was blood and flesh caked to this thing's face. The way it rose up to look at me, though, was so unnerving. It was calm and just pushed up with its front arms to a canine sitting position. There was no fear on this thing whatsoever. 
it knew that it was the apex predator and that I wasn't going to be able to harm it. I took in the details again. The lighter face with the dark muzzle, the dark brown and red fur, and the spots. It was definitely the same one I saw a month before that. Thank God. I think the only thing more terrifying than seeing this thing is knowing that there's more than one of them out there that you can run into. And I got a better look at the eyes this time. They were glowing again, probably from the headlights, but they really looked like this animal realized what was going on. That's the scary part. It was like it knew what I was, and that it understood that it should leave. It was intelligent. Completely intelligent. Maybe even self-aware. It didn't look at me like my dog looks at me, if that makes any sense. It looked at me like the apes do at the zoo. How there's just more behind those eyes than some kind of wild animal. It sat there for what felt like an eternity at the time, and it just locked eyes with me. And then it slowly stood up and trotted off the same direction it did the first time, which was towards the beach. It stopped on the side of the road and looked back at me, and it was probably thinking to itself, Dude, this is the second time you've ruined my dinner. I obliged by driving away from the area. I reported it again, but how can you say you saw Dogman Variant 2 and have the local authorities take you seriously? Excuse me, officer, I've seen it more than once now, and I'm pretty sure you have some kind of hyena creature, or maybe a were hyena, or some kind of shit like that, wandering around around the beach. You think you can come out here? I hope you have silver bullets. P.S. Have a nice day. I don't see that conversation going very well. But anyway, I never saw that creature again, and I drove that road for another year before I got a different job. I watched for it every night that I drove down that road. Had my camera ready and everything, but I never saw it again. What do you think it was that I saw? I'm dead set on believing that it was that variant too, but if there's something else out there that me and my wife don't know about, by all means, enlighten me. Until then, I'll go on believing what I saw. I want to tell you a few things about me first, before I get into my encounter. When this happened, I was only 14 years old. I was with my cousin Tina and my best friend Jamie. They were both 15 years old. We were just a couple of girls that wanted to have a little adventure for a night and never thought anything like this could happen. I mean, how could it? Things like this aren't even supposed to be real. But I can tell you firsthand that they are real. We live in Ohio, near Wayne National Forest. Tina and her parents only lived about 15 minutes from the forest itself. One weekend during the summer of 2014, all three of us were at Tina's house, and we decided that we wanted to go on a girls' camping trip just for the weekend. At first, our parents were against the idea, but Jamie's sister Michelle was in town during her summer break. She was in college. She said she could tag along if it made the parents feel better. She was 19 at the time that this happened. Of course, all of our parents felt better having Michelle go with us, especially because she was able to drive us to Wayne Forest. We packed what we thought we would need, which turned out to be way too much, and then we loaded up in Michelle's car and headed for our destination. We ended up doing that dispersed camping since the first place we found had too many noisy people and a lot of dogs that were just wandering around. So we drove deeper into the woods and found this quiet spot that would fit our tent. Honestly, I'm not even sure we could camp in that area, let alone have a campfire, but we were responsible about it and we didn't leave it unattended. Before we even made the campfire, I started getting creeped out, but I just brushed it off as being alone in the woods. We'd never done anything like that before, and I was a mix of fear and excitement. We each went in a different direction to gather firewood, and that's when I initially started feeling weird. You see, I got one of those feelings like I was being watched, and remember looking around when everything became really quiet. I mean, dead silent. It was like all those other encounters that I've read, when everything just stops making noise. It was just this unnatural quiet around me. I feel like there should have been a lot more noise in that forest at that point, especially because it was during the day. As I look around, 
I felt this chill come over me, and all of a sudden, I was really cold, even though it was July. Again, I thought I was just being silly. I collected my share of the firewood and returned to camp. I guess I brushed off the feelings and just wanted to have fun. In retrospect, though, I should have listened to those instincts. That night, we sat around the campfire and cooked hot dogs and put a lot of other things on our sticks to see what we could cook, including pickles, tomatoes, and gummy worms. The pickles weren't that bad, but the gummy worms just melted right off. Of course we made s'mores too, and then tried to scare each other by telling scary stories. Mine wasn't very good, because it had to make it on the fly, but Michelle told of this urban legend about a monster that got its tail cut off. The hermit cut off the tail and ate it, and then the monster killed him to get it back. It was pretty good, and pretty creepy, especially because it took place in a forest. After sitting around the fire for a long time, we decided to go to sleep, and all four of us crawled into the little four-person tent that we brought. It was a tight squeeze, but I admit that after the scary stories, I was glad to be close to the other people. Being in the tent made me feel a little safer too. I guess it's the same mentality of pulling the covers over your head in bed. It's not like either of these things could actually protect you from anything, I guess it was just the fact that we weren't exposed and out in the open. I ended up being the last person to fall asleep, naturally. I guess camping out in the middle of nowhere was a little creepier than I had imagined. So I just laid there, listening to all the sounds of the night and trying to figure out what types of animals were making them. And then, all those noises stopped pretty much at the exact same time. Let me tell you this, if I wasn't creeped out before, this made me really shiver. It was just the eeriest thing to experience. And to top it off, I was sleeping on one of the ends, so I was right next to the tent wall. I laid perfectly still and listened for anything to make a sound. That's when I heard something shuffling around outside of our tent, and it sounded to me like it was getting closer. My heart started pounding and skipping beats. I could hear whatever it was grunting and sniffing around as it got closer. It sounded like it was a pretty large animal too. I remember trying to wiggle back away from the tent wall as much as I could and ended up damn near on top of Tina. She started to move around, like she was waking up, and when she did, I put my hand over her mouth and quietly shushed her. Luckily I didn't have to explain myself, and she just went along with it. And both of us stayed there huddled together as we listened to whatever it was out there moving around, right around our campsite. At one point, it knocked something over and made a pretty loud noise. We both jumped so high I'm surprised we didn't come out of our sleeping bags. And then Jamie was the next to wake up because of that sound, and she asked what the noise was, and then everything went to hell. I hadn't realized she was awake, or I would have tried to keep her quiet too. All I know is when that thing out there heard her voice, it started growling and running around the tent. It was moving really fast and making this growling noise that sounded too deep to even be real. It's like I could feel this thing growling in my chest. All three of us started freaking out quietly trying not to hyperventilate, and whispering to each other trying to figure out what the hell was going on. And that's what woke up Michelle. She tried to get us to answer her, but she started hearing the noises too and joined in on our mutual freaking out. It stopped running around the tent and started sniffing it. The growling started to get progressively more aggressive too, and all four of us were huddled right in the middle of the tent, crying, still freaking out. I honestly thought it was going to come through that flimsy ass tent material and attack us, and I still didn't even know what it was. Jamie kept crying out that it was a bear and accusing us of bringing food into the tent, but none of us had, and Michelle said it definitely wasn't a bear out there. There was just enough light to actually see the silhouette of this thing moving around outside, and it looked as big as it sounded. I can't tell you any definite details though, none of us looked out of the tent to see what it was. But there was this odor while it was there, like a manure heap or something like that, very potent and very disgusting. At one point, it looked like it stood up because the shadow of it loomed over the tent. So much so, that I don't even know if we could see the entire shape outside. And then it started moving again, and the shape was different. It looked like it wasn't moving on all fours to me anymore, 
which damn near made me hyperventilate again. I think I even had an anxiety attack at one point because I could barely breathe. I couldn't really focus and I couldn't stop shaking. This thing moved around our tent for what seemed like hours and every so often it would press into the tent material and the tent would start shaking. The whole time it did that, the growls intensified. Tina was praying the majority of the time. She seemed scared but calm at the same time. Later she told me she was praying for Jesus to protect us. I don't know, maybe that's what kept us safe. Maybe that's why that thing eventually left. After scaring the hell out of us for a good solid hour, that is. After a while it just went away. You could hear it trotting off from our campsite and the growling disappeared. After a while, there was this long, deep scream from somewhere inside the woods. I know it was that thing. What else could it be? Needless to say, none of us got out of that tent, or even really moved for that matter. And for the rest of the night, every little sound sent us right back into that terrified frenzy. None of us even really talked. We just sat there shaking and whimpering and trying to hug each other for comfort. And then finally, the sun came up and we were absolutely positive that that thing was gone. We got out of that tent and looked around. Our campsite was destroyed. There were marks all around our site and our tent that looked like something was scratching or digging and all these weird footprints that looked like they were three-toed. I don't know of any animal that has three toes around this area. The creepiest thing we found was our sweatshirts were gone. We had brought them out because once the sun went down it was a little bit cold, but we never ended up wearing them. Jamie, Michelle, and myself had left them outside and all three of them were missing. We searched around the area without going far away from each other, but we never found them. And then to top it off, the area right outside of our campsite in the trees had a very strong smell of animal urine too. It was like this thing was marking its territory, but why the hell? Would it run off with our sweaters? The footprints didn't look like an average animal. The steps looked too big and looked like they were only moving on two feet, which really confirmed that what I had thought the night before was true. That this thing, whatever the hell it was, could shift back and forth from four legs to two legs. You tell me what kind of animal can do that. After seeing this, we all decided that that was enough investigating and we needed to get the hell out of there. And honestly, I can't even believe that we ended up being there that long after the sun came up. We should have just got the hell out of there, drove away and never looked back. On the way back, all four of us shared our version of the events the night before, and for the most part we all agreed on all the details. When I brought up the fact that I thought it was walking on two legs, that seemed to scare the hell out of everyone, because they all realized I was probably right. The four of us agreed that it wasn't a bear and it wasn't a person. Everything after that, we'd never know. When we talked about the weird scream that came from the forest, no one knew what it could be, and all of us agreed that it sounded out of this world. We all made a pact that ride home that none of us would ever go back into that forest again, no matter what. When we got back, we told our parents, but they all collectively thought we were overreacting and feeding off of each other's paranoia. It really didn't matter. All four of us experienced the same thing, and we can vouch for each other. After our experience, Jamie was the one that did the most research and came across something called the Dogman. She showed us some websites and YouTube videos on them, and all four of us strongly believe that it was a Dogman we ran into that night. There's all kinds of sightings in Ohio, especially in Germantown, and even in Wayne Forest. I think we were lucky to be here telling you this story today. I don't know why it didn't slash open that tent and kill us all. We were an easy meal. I'm still creeped out by the fact that it has my sweater too. Does that mean it knows my scent? All the more reason to stay the hell out of the woods. I will never go back in there. I will never go camping again, anywhere. I beg everyone listening to watch your backs if you're in that position. And don't do anything stupid. Yours truly. Stacy. My name is Ronald Bierce. I'm 20 years old and I live in the back skirts of a small town in Wayne County, West Virginia called Lavalette. 
Originally, my family and I lived in Jacksonville, Florida, but we moved up here because it was getting too humid for us to handle, and we couldn't deal with the hurricanes down there. Now, what I'm about to tell you is 100% true, and to this day, what I saw was something I will never forget. I was in my freshman year at Marshall University, located in Huntington, West Virginia, but I didn't own an apartment to live in at the time, and still don't, so I still had to live with my parents and little brother. Of course, I had to get used to all the stress that occurred in our house, and my brother was kind of being a nuisance to me. Well, he usually is, but I still love him just as much as I love our parents. Little brothers, you know. This happened on August 27th, 2017, on a Saturday evening, about somewhere between 6.30 and 7.30 p.m. I was taking a very long drive out of my white 2009 Ford Fusion, and it turns out, I got lost on the way home. I guess I was driving too far away from my liking. Eventually, it was getting dark, and I found my way home, and I was coming upon the road I usually take to get home, which was Mount Union Road. I take that road all the time to get past this Baptist church, and further up that road, I pass this barn. A family friend of my dad works at it, as well as this great big curve that overlooks a field where a herd of black Angus roam. I pass by a little cemetery, and drive along a cliff where it overlooks the entire valley. Once I pass that, I come upon one road that leads me straight to my house, Walnut Gap Road. Well, I know my description of my way home sounds a little confusing, but that's why everything looked the way it did. Anyway, I drove past an abandoned white church that has to be over 100 years old in my opinion, and up ahead comes this blind curve where I can't see who's coming from the opposite direction. So I usually just slow down before I drive around to make sure no one was going to come flying around the corner. Suddenly, when I slowly drove around the corner, I stopped the car when I see this thing stepping onto the road on all four legs. At first, I thought it had to have been a 500 pound black bear because we do have some of those around here. It also looked to be the same size and had black fur. But when I can see it in my headlights, I realize it's not a black bear at all, but something else entirely. It looked like a wolf, but much bigger bigger than anything I've ever seen before. It had the same pointed ears and long bushy tail, which told me that it wasn't a black bear, considering bears only have a very tiny tail. I was excited at first to finally see a wolf out in the wild, but at the same time something seemed rather off about this encounter. A wolf shouldn't be this big. In fact, there shouldn't even be any wolves here in West Virginia anymore. Was the government secretly trying to repopulate wolves in this state? Did some wolves escape from a zoo or something? Somehow found their way right here and right now, right in front of me? Those ideas were immediately shot down for me though, when I saw this creature pierce its eyes straight at me. And then, even while inside the car, I could hear what sounded like joints popping loudly. And then to my shock, I watched this giant wolf-like monstrosity stand up on two hind legs and place its hand on the top of my car's hood. You heard me right its hand. Not its paw, its hand. We're talking fingers and fingernails. And by the time it stood up, that's when I got a really good look at it. It stood approximately 8 feet tall, possibly weighing around 600 to 650 pounds. Maybe more, maybe less. I don't think I'm embellishing, but the mind plays crazy tricks on you when you see something this completely out of the ordinary. It looked very muscular too, with broad shoulders and long forearms, and the hands looked almost like raccoon hands with these jet black claws on each fingertip. I could see the muscles of this thing very definitively in the headlights. Its chest seemed to puff in and out as it took these deep breaths. The hind legs resembled more of those of a canine, the legs making that bent backwards appearance, huge paws at its feet, but the head was what scared me the most. Its head was like that of a wolf or a large German Shepherd, but bigger in proportions. It had a long muzzle with a sort of pointed nose and these great big fangs gouging out from the front, which eerily looked similar to those of a Smilodon or saber-toothed cat in a way. It had long pointed ears with tufts of fur standing at the ends of them. But the eyes. I know a lot of people say it, but I'll say it again too. I will never 
forget those eyes. They were this amber yellowish color and the way they were looking at me, I felt as if they were piercing into my soul. Instantly, I was frozen in fear. My heart was beating in my throat and it must have been beating a million miles an hour. You know the feeling you get even though you're an apex predator? You feel very vulnerable in the eyes of such a beast like this? Like a lion or a bear or a crocodile? That's exactly how I felt when it looked at me. Top of the food chain? <laughs> Not us. Not when this thing's out there. Not to this thing at all. I knew it was THE apex predator. No lion could come up against this thing. Or bear or wolf. Especially not me. I was its prey. And I knew that it knew that. This creature could tear my car up with me still inside. It could have tore the door off and tried to pull me out. Even if I tried to escape and run as fast as I could, I knew it could outrun me, catch up to me, rip me to pieces and eat my remains. And I would never be found again, even if I was screaming for help. I honestly thought I was going to die that night, that I was never going to see my family or my friends again, that I was about to be eaten alive by this predatory creature that I never even knew existed until now, and there was nothing that I could do about it. Fortunately for me though, that never happened. As if God was watching over me that night, the creature instead let out this monstrous snarl, took its hand off my car hood, and then walked to the other side of the road in two strides. Like a ghostly phantom, it disappeared into the darkness without making a sound, but not before turning around to look back at me one last time. When that happened, I could have sworn that it wasn't alone, because I think I saw several more glowing amber eyes staring right at me too from the darkness. I knew instantly that one of these things is intimidating enough, but imagine what it was like to run into a whole pack of them. With that terrifying thought in mind, I decided to get the hell out of there. I finally slammed my foot on top of the accelerator and drove my car out of there like a bat out of hell. I got home in literally one minute. At the time I got home, I was in tears. I've never felt that scared in my entire life, and that was the first time I've ever cried that much in so many years. I told my parents and little brother about what I saw, but of course they didn't believe me. My parents just assumed I was merely faking the incident to make them believe me, and my brother was constantly harassing me about it, but at least they were concerned when they saw me in tears. At this point in time, I've then shut out everyone I know to the point where I isolated myself to my own bedroom. I still do today, and since then, I've never told anyone about my encounter ever again. I mean, who's going to believe me that I actually saw not one or two, but a whole damn pack of these real werewolves or dogmen or whatever you want to call them? Eventually, I'd open myself back into the social life and begin spending time with my friends and family again, but at the same time, I did some intense research to explain what I've seen that night and that's when I discovered the Dogman phenomenon for the first time. According to eyewitnesses, they're describing the same exact thing that I saw, and then I found your channel, and I heard how you narrate these terrifying experiences that so many of your creatures of the night had with these Dogman, and other things for that matter. It made me so happy and relieved that I wasn't alone, that there are other people out there who agree to this day that what they saw was real. Now, I may have an imagination. It may be active and unique, but I didn't imagine this whatsoever. I wasn't drunk, considering I always follow the rules about DUIs and car safety. I wasn't delusional. I wasn't hallucinating. I've never been delusional, and I've never hallucinated. Hell, I wasn't even dreaming about it. It was, without question, a very real and very nightmarish experience that I will never ever forget in my entire life. I don't know why it didn't kill me when it had the chance, but I know that whatever it was that I saw is completely real. Thank you and your creatures of the night so much for taking the time to listen to my story, and I do pray to God that no one else would have to experience something that scary ever again in all of their lives. Thank you, and good night.